In this closing session here today, I want to talk about the last day's church and the seven times glory that is coming. Yes. The seven times glory. As we focus on Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit first visited, one of the things that we learned yesterday was that the Holy Spirit came as a dove so that he can lead the dove back to Jesus. Yeah. He came as a dove to go after the dove, which is the church. Amen. And the way he went after the dove is by this Greek word called metamorpho, which means transformation and also transfiguration. Yeah. He works from the inside out, but also he's waiting for that day for the glory to come from the outside in. Yeah. <laughs> so there is a two-part glory. Yes. Yes. One that works on the inside before the one from the outside comes. So this is important because many of us want what is from the outside, but we don't allow him to work on the inside. Yeah. If you don't change, if you don't allow the Holy Spirit yes, God. to go on the inside, you're just dreaming about the outside. Yeah. The outside cannot come until the inner transformation has already taken place. See, I hear, you know, I've been in church over 44 years. Over 44 years. I walked into church when I was 12 years old. So I've been in this thing for a while. And I've been in church where people say, Oh, the glory of God, the glory of God is here. Oh, there's, there's a presence of God, there's a glory of God. And then they walk out of the door. And they start an argument. Mm, sure. <laughs> <laughs> they go to a restaurant after 20 minutes of the service and they pick a fight with a waiter. What glory is that? What glory is that? The testimony of a Christian and an unbeliever is the same. Amen. Wow. Amen. Come on. That's Come on. right. No difference. Say it's nothing. You know, in fact, you know, they don't even want to put the Christian logo at the back of the car because they speak just like an unbeliever. That's right. Yeah. Okay? In case you didn't know, when you pass that speeding limit, the angels get out. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> because, because they obey rules. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. They obey rules. When the sign says 80 and you press 90, they say bye bye. <laughs> You're on your own, buddy. What? Because they are under order. Jesus. That's a word, Pastor. When they are under order, they will never support this order. Right. Exactly. Support their order. That's okay. Right. 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 Never support. You can say this order in Jesus' name. Come on. Don't work. No, sir. That's why Christians die in car accident just like unbelievers. No, oh, Jesus. Oh, that suddenly became quiet. Like that I, I think he hit a couple of people. Okay. Yeah, yeah I just don't want to see blood on the floor here. Right. <laughs> After a while. Hallelujah. So the Holy Spirit wants to work on the inside. Right? But what do we do? We come to the church and we think we are the policeman of the Holy Spirit. Oh, oh, man. Oh, man. My job now in our church is to see how others are behaving. Mm -hmm. oh, man. When did Jesus appoint you to be the policeman? Okay. Come on. Come on. <laughs> when did Jesus call you out of heaven and says, Yeah, you are my policeman, you take care of everyone else? Okay. Come on. Preach. Preach. So what happens? You are now looking at everybody's issue, but yeah. never look at your issue. Amen. Come on, come on. Never look at your weakness. Amen. Never look at your shortcomings. Amen. And so what happens? We got a new anointing in church. It's called the critical anointing. Come on. Yeah. And the only problem with this critical anointing, it doesn't come 
in need, he comes and stays. Wow. Yeah. So what do you have? You have a bunch of people that are bickering, complainers, murderers. So what? How can God come? He comes in little trickles. Because he still loves his people. He still loves them. So he tries to come. He tries to come. See, these last days, this is going to change. This is going to change. Why, is, why do I say this is going to change? This is going to change because we have only had outer level glory. <laughs> God has not brought in holy of holies glory. Wow. Yeah. He can't bring it in That's yet right. until the transformation happens. That's because if right. he brings that in now, there will be no church. That's right. Woo! You heard about Ananias and Sapphira? Oh, oh, man. Man. That will be the whole church of the service. That's right. You won't even have anybody to pull people out because including the pastor is there. All right. <laughs> right? Maybe the pastor died first. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Right? Maybe he died first because he was stealing from the offering. Oh, oh, Lord. oh man. God help us. I know that's right. Hallelujah. Jesus. So there's a last day's glory that's coming. Yeah. Isaiah 30 verse 26 says, Moreover, the light of the moon will be like the light of the sun. And the light of the sun will be seven times brighter, like the light of seven days. Like the light of seven days. The last day's glory is talking about here, that you will come in a seven-fold glory. Mm-hmm. Pentecost was an introduction was a preparation that from the outer core of the tabernacle, now people enter into the holy place. Yes, yeah. That's why in the holy place, we have had worship, we have had word, we have had intercession. Yeah. And since Pentecost, right, since what you see even as Azusa Street in 1906, one of the things that you have been seeing is that the word of God has gone forth, much stronger, worship has risen up, hallelujah, and intercession has gone up. But that's not the final place God wants us to be. She needs us. Because there's a greater glory come. See, this is what we have been doing. We have been moving between the outer court and the holy place. We have been moving, we have been going out to the outer court and coming back in to the holy place. So we won't problem. That's not the direction God had planned. The direction God had planned is actually from the holy place moving into the holy of holies. That's his plan. I'll show you. See, the apostle Paul talked about this glory that was coming. Because in his day, he received a revelation from God that there is this greater glory that's coming. And he really believed that he was going to be part of it. Forget the scripture. He says, I consider the sufferings of this present time not worthy compared with the glory that is going to be revealed in us. Hallelujah. Remember, okay, this is after Pentecost. This is after the Holy Spirit had already come. He's saying there's a glory coming one. Even greater. Even greater than what we saw in Pentecost. Hallelujah. He's not talking about Pentecost. He's talking about something greater. Come on, come on. Something greater that's coming. Hallelujah. Pentecost was just an introduction. Amen. This is why I call Pentecost. Pentecost is glory 1.0. Okay. What's coming is glory Pentecost 7.0. He's not even going to 2.0 or 3.0 or 4.0. He's going to jump to 7. (laughs) Hallelujah. Hallelujah. From 1.0. He's going to go to 7.0. Thank you, Father. Seven for glory. Jesus. Hallelujah. In 2 Corinthians 17, verse 11, he says, 
what is passing away was glorious. Hallelujah. He's talking about the glory Moses had. And then he says, what remains is much more glorious. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What will remain? Remember what I said yesterday? That which is coming yes. is not visiting you. It's going to stay in you. Amen. See, what we have right now is only visitation rights. Mm. Yeah. Sounds like an absent father. Wow. Who only visits his kids. Mm. That's the one visitation. Amen. He wants to stay. Hallelujah. Come on. The Hebrew word is the word shaka, which means dwelling place. Mm. He's coming to dwell. See, God's goal was not just to save you and touch you and use you. God's goal, save you, touch you, and fill you. Amen. So that wherever you go, they see him. Amen. 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 They see him. Yes. Wow. They see him. Can I tell you a little bit of a glimpse of that final plan of God? You know, you know, when God's kingdom comes, at the end of the age when Jesus' rulership comes, you will represent him across the universe. Across the universe. You will be across the planets. There are hundreds of universes out there. Jesus. As you go to these planets and universe, those people that are there, this is what they will experience. They will experience as if God had shown up. Because you will carry His Spirit, His essence, and His presence. Now do you understand why it is so important that you are not just transformed, but transfigured. Mm. You think like him. You speak like him. You are the embodiment of him. Of him. Everything about you is only about him. You become the shadow, and he becomes the reality. You see, we have glimpses now. A little, little tiny bit glimpse. Yes, we do. When you get into those moments of worship, you, you get into those places, and all you want to do is like, you want to shout, but you want to hide. You want to scream, you want to shout, but you want to hide in the corner and get a curtain somewhere. I don't want to be seen. Okay. I want to be clear, but I don't want to be seen. Jesus. Because when I am seen, then he will not be seen. Come on, come on. Hallelujah. Oh. I, I don't want to be known. Yeah. I want to be that voice. I want to be that sound. I want to be that hands. I want to be that feet. Come on. Hallelujah. But I want his reality. Yeah. Hallelujah. Because when people see me, they don't get saved. Oh. When people see me, I don't get healed. Oh. When people see me, they don't get judged. Come on. Hallelujah. Yes. Oh, my God. Yes. Oh, yes. feel an iota. Come on. Just an iota. Ah. An iota. Hallelujah. Of him. Yes, they just faint mm. oh. in his glory. Hallelujah. I was a man called Father Nash. Mm. And last year I was last year during the pandemic. And I said, great time, pandemic. I had the opportunity, you know, to visit Finney's grave. Finish and Finney, these two men carried a revival. I 
So the guy that carried the Bible was not Finney. It was actually Nash. Finney was the voice. But Nash was the presence. Mm. Nash was the intercessor. Mm. Come on. Before Finney would go anywhere to preach, he would say Nash. And Nash would go into places like Rochester, up in the New York State, go to different places, and he would go and lock himself in a room. Come on. And, and, and the people who ran these rooms out knew that he was working with Finney. And uh, with two or three other guys, they would go into a room and start weeping and uh, just wailing. And the, the, the lady would call Finney, say, you sent, you sent these guys. I haven't seen them in the last two weeks. I opened their door. I want to know what's going on. I opened the door and I saw all three of them on their face. Just weeping. Weeping, weeping. And Finney, Finney would contact Nash because he knew the next city was there. And he would call Nash and he would ask them, Is that city ready? And Nash would say, It is ready. Come on. <laughs> it is ready. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. It is ready. The guy who was the shadow. Knew when the revival was ready. Wow. You see how we got it wrong? Yeah. Come on. You see how we got it wrong? Come on. We flipped it. Yeah. We flipped it. We think it's the guy that's the voice who knows everything. It's rubbish. Yeah. Rubbish! It's the guy that don't want to be known. He's the one that's used. The day Nash. Done. Finished revival stopped. Mm. Wow. It stopped. Because the vehicle of that revival was the shadow. Wow. Was that shadow. A man called Father Nash. Mm -hmm. You know how the glory will come? It's when we strive. To become a shadow. Are we pressing to become someone's shadow? It's quiet. We desire, we long to be the shadow of this next generation that's coming. You know what's the problem today in many churches? The pastors are all still sons. Say it. Mm -hmm. Come on. They refuse to become fathers. True. Come on. But the day is coming. God's going to raise up the fathers. Amen. So that these sons can finish their assignment. Hallelujah. 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 How do they qualify? Mm. Paul prepared himself for this glory that's coming and he knew the only way that he will be part of this glory that's coming is that he has to have preparation. Mm. And you can see that preparation in just these few verses in the Philippines. The Philippines right. Number one. All things are lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ. Hallelujah. Everything that he had ever known was lost. For one thing, he wants to know Jesus. Because knowing will lead you to encounter. What is happening today? Today, the church has lost its passion for the word. It's lost its hunger for the word. You know what today they tell you when you go to churches? Preach 30 minutes. Some churches even better. I went to one. The pastor told me 25 minutes. I said, that's a problem. Why? I'm an Indian. <laughs> My introduction is 25 minutes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I really saw Pastor Dick. 
Korean is not found on the shelf. Korean is not found on the shelf. Right? So I tell these people, you what? So oh, we can only handle 20 minutes. <laughs> because people do not have the ability to retain more than 20 minutes. Come on. Interesting. So this is what I tell them. When you get to heaven, after 20 minutes, God will send a bus. Because you just told him, I can only handle you for 20 minutes. <laughs> the rest of the time, he will take you to hell. More. And leave you there until the next Sunday for another 20 minutes. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Because it is the knowledge 
that gives you the boldness, the courage, and the strength. Without that knowledge, you will never do exploits. Because they that know their God, they that know their God, hallelujah, shall be strong and do exploits. Now do you know why? There's no strength and there's no exploits. Because the knowledge is not increasing. Increasing new facets of his glory, new understanding of his glory, new knowledge of his glory. You know what people want nowadays? They want the milk of the word. Come on. Milk of the word. Right? Just give me milk. Why? You already prepared it. All I want to do is be a sucker. <laughs> 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 you know, if a, if a two year old or a one year old was a sucker, it's okay. <laughs> we call it natural sucker. Yeah. 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 If a 20 year old right. was still sucking milk, come on, come on. what would you call him? What's the language you call him? A big baby. A big baby. A big baby. <laughs> right? Yeah. An overgrown. Suck. <laughs> Sorry, no offense you in your country, too bad. <laughs> right? If you have a child, 20 year old, walking around with a milk bottle. Uh, no, Come on now. What do you want to say to him? Well, you have to say, how cute. <laughs> like, no. you, you know what I would say? Be even possessed. <laughs> Open the bottle and pour the milk away. <laughs> right? If my one year old came to me and said, Dad, right, can you, you know, have a milk? Or oh, have a black, especially if mom's not around. I bring my one year old and I say, What kind of milk do you want? <laughs> Definitely, it would be chocolate. Get <laughs> <laughs> the Hershey's bottle and just okay. squeeze it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and mom comes back. And technically, the kids can jump in. <laughs> and Mom said, like, What did you do? What did you do? Well, I gave her she had milk. <laughs> you know what? I know what Daddy's will be doing. Right? Till 4 in the morning, he'll be walking the time. Right? That's what fathers do, right? Yeah. We walk the time. Right? But if your 10 year old comes to you and says, I want milk. What would you do? This is what I would do. I would bring her or him to the refrigerator. Usually it's a double door opening. We got more than milk. Come on. 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 We got more than milk. We got all kinds of stuff. She's a baby. Can only handle milk. But now you can handle anything. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have a whole bunch of stuff. Hallelujah. Why don't you just help yourself? Yeah, come come on. on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We got to go to a place where now we want to chew and eat the new revelation of God. Amen. Because the new revelation, the new knowledge of God yes. will bring us to greater exploits. Yes. Greater invasion. Do you know what happened in the 80s? That's not happening now. I tell you, in the 80s, we had hundreds and thousands of people going into missions. Amen. Do you know today, we have the smallest number of people yes. going into missions? Yes. Tell me of a church that you think of in your head that has a missionary overseas. Mm. It's probably zero or one. Yeah. one two. Do you know who has the biggest number of missionaries around the world? The Mormon church. Church. 
They have the wrong message, but yeah. the right method. Yeah. Yeah. We have the right message, but no method. Come on. <laughs> you know what we are producing? Babies. Oh, man. Come on, Pastor. <laughs> Babies. Why? Because if we are producing giants, you know what we will produce? They are growing so fast. They will look at you and say, Where do you want me to go? Come on. Come on. I grew up in a church. About 100 people. We had over 35 who were ready to jump over the cliff. Come on. 100 people. We had more missionaries ready to go anywhere in the world than local pastors. You know what we have today? The reverse. Because we go to church, right? There are 20 people. And 15 are leaders. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. I went to one church. The pastor is introducing. This is minister so and so. This is deacon so and so. I was like, you got so many titles? The church was only 20 people. 12 of them all had titles. No wonder they don't want to go anywhere. Yeah. You're getting quiet on me here. Come on. <laughs> Why? Because you are supposed to. To bring them to the level of the knowledge of God where now they cannot be sitting around in the church anymore. Because now they have known God so much. They are ready to step over the line. Yes. Yes. You bring them to that place. Hallelujah. Because you set them on fire, they refuse to sit in the pit. Yes. Amen. Come on. Yes. Amen. They refuse to do the same thing in church over and over and over again. Yes. Come on, come on. Hallelujah. But now they want to go to the ends of the earth. Come on. They want to go and invade the enemy's camp. Because the Holy Ghost is not just trickling. He's on an overflow mode. Yeah. And because he's on an overflow mode, they are ready to explode. That's why they cannot, cannot come back to church like before. Come on, man. Impossible. 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 See what the Holy Ghost does? Think about this. The early church started and it covered the Roman world. Within a short span of over 20 years, they covered the entire region. Born alone, single-handedly, planted anywhere from 14 to 20 churches. The apostle Paul alone, who was not even the disciple of Jesus. All over. Why? Because this fire cannot be quenched. This fire cannot be stopped. If this fire can be stopped, it can be quenched. Why? Because there's not enough fire. <clears throat> not enough fire. Number two, what we see here is that as you are prepared for this coming glory, there must be an openness to new revelation. Yes. Yes. Amen. A new revelation. That old thing that we used to do cannot work anymore. Yeah. It cannot be sustained anymore. You know what we do? I go to some churches today. I'm telling you. I go to some churches today around the world. They look like the Catholic church. <laughs> you know why I know the Catholic church? Because I was an altar boy. <laughs> in the Catholic church. 
And one of the things that the priests of the Catholic Church do is that when they feel the church needs a freshness, they do renovation. They bring marbles from overseas. They bring beautiful chandeliers. So the people walk in and they say, when they look at the facade, they get excited. Wow. Look at our church. It's so glorious. Wow. wow. But you know what's the sad part? It's still hollow on the inside. The fake church looks great, but the real church looks empty. Lord. So they buy the new sound system. They added some elements. Some churches I've seen all over the world. They have uniform. That means we're at the same home. Right? Come on, man. Don't tell me that's from God. Right? Why? Because the minute a beggar walks into your church, he will feel out of place. Exactly. Jesus. He will realize that this is not church, this is the cup. The beggar will know that's a cup. Yes. Why? Because the church is supposed to make room for everybody. Amen. Not create uniform. This is not Manchester Club. <laughs> right? Right? This is not Washington Red Sox or whatever. <laughs> Chicago Bulls. Yeah. Snap! It's, it's the challenge. Amen. You have to add an openness to the new day. Yes. The more you push to the old day, yes. Yes. you will miss the new day. Yes. Uh-huh. We get comfortable with the old day. See, this is our human nature. We like to stay with familiarity. Mm -hmm. We refuse to get uncomfortable. Because when we get uncomfortable, God starts to work. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And number three, what Paul said, conform to his death. To his death. The only way this new glory will come is if we keep dying. Mm. And he keeps living. Ah. We keep dying. And he keeps living. If you have been in certain ministry for some time, it's time to change that ministry. Come on. If you have been in a certain thing, that's the only thing you do. Every week you go, you play the same keyboard, it's time to move. Why? Because if you don't move, you will die. Wow. Come on. That's the truth. Wow. And if you stay in the same place, now you become religious. Yeah. Mm. Right. Mm. Why do you become religious? Because this is your comfort zone. Yeah. Right. It's supposed to be your death zone. Woo! Jesus, the reason why he brought you there at the wow. beginning wow. is because it was a death zone. Yes. Mm. When I started preaching, I didn't want to preach. It was a death zone. <laughs> I had no ambition, no desire. God literally threw me to the front. Mm. That's why I love throwing people. (laughs) Oh, yeah. I have great pleasure. (laughs) There was one history made a conference I did many years ago. I forgot what country we've done in so many places. And the Lord told me at the conference. In this conference, yeah, I know you're a leader. You don't even touch the microphone. That's what he told me. I said, fantastic. Best gift you gave me. <laughs> I sit in the front row and just look at people and do this. Isn't that a gift? Right? Isn't that a gift? But people get worked up to me. How come I didn't leave Bush? Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Why did a pastor assign me? To preach today. Mm. Wasn't I supposed to be the one? Mm. You know, only when I sing, only when I play, the anointing is there. Mm. 
of the living God. We want to go to that place where that presence is an overflow. An overflow. Overflow. 
One of the stories that moved me from missions, I heard it when I was about 19 years old. That's why I went to China. It was this young girl. Or 87, 87, 86. She was a peasant girl from the northern part of China. She didn't have a Bible, she didn't have a church. She was listening to shockwave radio. While listening to shockwave radio, she got saved. Soon after that, she started preaching. Long story, I'll make it real short. Police called her, warned her, you preach again, we'll throw you in prison. But she decided after a few months, instead of going to a certain area, she went to another area. She started preaching. A whole bunch of people got saved. She don't have a Bible, she don't have a church. She don't have Christians in her village. Just listening to shockwave radio every day. A whole bunch of people said, Police catch her, beat her. Bring her to the police station, beat her. Drag her back to her house, throw her in front of her parents. She preached again. We were killed. She's only about 18 years old. Parents tell her, Can't stop. Can't stop. No, that's what she said. It's just a new beginning. It's just a new beginning. You can't stop it. You can't stop this. That's what she said. How can I stop preaching about a God who gave himself for me? I was not even born. I did not even exist. And he gave himself. She recovered a few months from all her injury. I told her parents, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to. For this reason, but these people don't know. She went over there. She walked into a, a marketplace, started preaching. The power of God fell, and just people fell on the ground. Because she was so covered by the glory. Still, listen to the shock radio. No Bible. No church. She started one. Over 400 converts. Listening to shock radio. No Bible. No worship music. No pastor. No church. What got a hold of her? What got a hold of her? Same Holy Spirit. Same Holy Spirit. The police catch her. November 1988, I remember that day. November the 12th. Her parents received a letter. And that letter came from prison. Her name was Martha. And this is what she said. She said, Mom and Dad, I'm in prison. And in one month's time, I'm going to be executed for preaching the gospel. And she repeated the words of the Apostle Paul. She said, Do not pray that I will be set free. But pray that I will preach the gospel till I die. Yes. Till I die. Yes. It baffles me. I don't know about you. But it baffles me. I grew up in a regular church. Good pastors. Good Bible teachers. Good word.
do anything. Die anytime. Any day. Any second. Ready to die. Charles Finney said, Revival happens when heroic souls enter into a conflict to die. To win or to die. Or to win and to die. That's when revival happens. This glory that is coming will come when God can find a people who are ready to die. Ready to die. If you are ready to die, wherever you are, listening to me, watching me right now, if you are ready to die, just lift up your hands. Just lift up your hands. All over Asia. If you are ready to die, lift up your hands. Not to me, but to the one who called you. To the one who saved you. But I'm ready. I'm ready.